Both Avatar series are seeing a new wave of popularity, which means we're all wondering what the heck happened to our favorite antagonist from The Last Airbender all over again. Azula dominated screen time as the calculating fire princess every viewer feared. She's one of the few main characters whose fate isn't shown in Legend of Korra. Until this theory popped up. Remember when the Bonti bring an amnesiac Korra to this firebending shaman? There was little information given to us about her history or even her name. She's one of the few benders we've seen manage to connect with the form on a spiritual level. She detects the dark energy feeding off Korra's avatar spirit, and then the team went on their merry way. That was the last time we saw this shaman. The theory is that she's actually Azula, living her life in the Southern Fire Nation after leaving her home. The hairstyle is the trigger that pushed this theory into existence, but there's way more to this idea than just the fact that she kinda resembles Princess Azula. Her age also matches the other main characters from the last Airbender series, uh, I think. Look, figuring out the exact age of an animated character is tough, everybody knows that, it's, it's like science. Okay, I get that that's not the most confident argument I've ever made, but there's one more essential fact about this shaman you need to notice. This character is one of the strongest firebenders in the Legend of Korra, or at least she understands the deep roots of the art form more than most. It takes a brilliant firebender to discover this medium's spiritual aspects, and Azula is undoubtedly a candidate. However, I know you're wondering how in the world Azula would end up on an island in the southern part of the Fire Nation. Don't worry, there are answers. Some of you poor souls out there never knew about the Avatar comics, and you need to correct that. Some issues feature Azula, so I figured going over the backstory might help to shed some light on the possibility of the shaman being Azula. If you've never read the comics, be aware that spoilers are incoming. You've, you've been warned, and now it's time for the details. So when we last left Azula, she was defeated by Katara during the best Agni Kai in the series. She had a mental breakdown that left her alone and desperate for a new chance. The comics pick up with her in an institution where Zuko approaches her in hopes of enlisting her help. See, their father Ozai won't tell Zuko where their mother is, but he admits he'd tell Azula, hence her release and the first time she teams up with the group. Things don't go swimmingly. In my opinion, she does learn a lot from Katara in that time, and it might explain the knowledge she'd obtained to connect with the spiritual side of Bendik. Right there, that's the first building block of this theory that you need to know. Now, Azula doesn't stay with Team Avatar after that. She has another mental breakdown during the trip and regresses back to her evil self. She flees the scene and begins planning her next move for the throne. Later on in the comic book series, Azula comes back and attempts to overthrow Zuko. She's defeated, obviously, because uh, why would she win? From there, she is banished and disappears, never to return to her home. I think that's the case. The comic book series ends, and that's the last concrete Azula storyline we get in a long time. That being said, one of the show's writers, Aaron Ehaz, mentioned a while back that he always wanted a redemption arc for Azula that never materialized. Keep in mind, this was posted on April 1st, so take it with a grain of salt if you want to, but I feel there is some truth to this discussion. Azula was one of the writing team's favorite characters to work with, and I'm sure there was a larger plan for her that never materialized. So, the shaman in Legend of Korra might be Azula, or it might not be. What I love about this theory is that it wraps up Azula's discord with a peaceful solution. Imagine her taking the lesson of her defeat at the hands of Katara and dedicating herself to the deeper, less material side of bending. There's no doubt in my mind that she learned about the dragons from Zuko and likely sought out lessons from them for her own growth. Over time, the hardened shell might have broken down and revealed a softer side of her personality. Even with Sokka and Aang not getting to be fully present in Legend of Korra, we still get backstory about where they ended things after the last airbender. Azula never gets that closure, and we all know she deserved it. Even if she turned out to still be terrible and vile, I wouldn't mind it. There's a sense of progress in wrapping her story up that we never got. I think we can all see Azula training more and more firebenders that believe in those false glory days, but that's never going to be proven one way or another. I love the shaman theory because it is the closest we get to a complete redemption arc for a villain since Zuko. If anyone were to discover the depths of firebending, it would be Azula. She's one of the greatest firebenders in her generation, 
and clearly capable of becoming a spiritual guide later in life. Even if this isn't the final answer to Azula's fate, I at least have an excuse to go back and watch both series over again. Not that I really needed one, but any chance to see Azula and Zuko in the last Agni Kai is an opportunity I'm not going to miss. 